Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton and today I want to talk to you about angular momentum. Our objectives for today are going to be to calculate the angular momentum vector for a moving particle and to calculate the angular momentum vector for a rotating rigid object where angular momentum is going to be parallel to the angular velocity. So let's start by talking about linear momentum. Momentum, P, is a vector describing how difficult it is to stop a moving object or to change the velocity of an object. The total momentum of a system is going to be the sum of all the individual momenta of the objects in that system. And a mass with velocity V has momentum P equals mass times the velocity vector, where the direction of the momentum vector is going to be in the same direction as the velocity vector. We've done that before. Now let's talk about angular momentum, the rotational analog to this. Angular momentum, given the symbol capital L, is a vector describing how difficult it is to stop a rotating object or to change the angular velocity of a rotating object. Now, just like with linear momentum, the total angular momentum of a system is going to be the sum of all the individual angular momenta of the objects in that system. So if we have a mass with velocity v moving at some position r about a point q, it has some angular momentum l with respect to q. The angular momentum depends on your point of origin, so we always have to reference the point we're discussing as a reference point when we talk about angular momentum. Let's take a look at how we might calculate this to see if we can't clear it up a little bit. Here we have a point particle m moving with velocity v, and we want to know its angular momentum about this reference point q. So the first thing I'm going to do is define a position vector r from our reference point to our mass. That's our r vector. We also know the velocity vector, and we know the momentum of our particle. That's going to be the mass times the velocity vector. So the angular momentum about point Q is equal to our R vector crossed with P vector. So that's a vector product, a cross product. And since momentum P is mass times the velocity vector, I could rewrite that as R crossed with MV. Or since mass is a constant, pull that out, R crossed with V times mass. Now the direction of this vector we can find out by using the right hand rule. Point the fingers of your right hand in the direction of R bend them in the direction of v, and your thumb will point in the direction of the positive angular momentum vector. In this case, that would be into the plane of the screen. Now we can take this a little bit further too. If r cross v times m is our angular momentum about point q, the magnitude of that vector is going to be m v r times the sine of the angle between r and v. Now imagine instead we have a point that's actually moving in a circle. Now if we're going about point q, some velocity v, that angle is going to be 90 degrees. So for an object that's spinning, we can say velocity equals angular velocity times the radius. So that becomes m, replace v with omega r, times another r, r squared, and since sine 90 of 1, we could say that the momentum vector is going to be, the magnitude of the angular momentum vector is going to be m r squared omega. Again, the sine of that angle has to be 90 degrees for that to work. But another way you can calculate this, and by the way, for a point particle, that should look kind of familiar. Now we're starting to talk about moment of inertia. Ah. Let's go a little bit more in depth and talk about spin angular momentum. For an object that's rotating about its center of mass, for example, for that particle spinning around a central point, then the angular momentum is going to be I omega. That's known as an object's spin angular momentum. It's an intrinsic property of an object rotating about its center of mass. It's constant even if you calculate it relative to any point in space, but it has to be rotating about its center of mass. All right, that's a very useful property. Let's see if we can't put this into practice a little bit. Let's find the angular momentum of a planet orbiting the sun, and we'll assume a perfectly circular orbit here. Well, let's find this about point Q, and at some initial point in time, there's our particle, 
So our initial position vector, r1, would look like that. And here it has some velocity vector, v1. Now, a little bit later, because this has some angular velocity, omega, our particles moved. Now, it's over here in its path. So we have a new position vector, r2, and it has a new velocity vector, v2, that is tangent to the circle. Now, if we wanted to find the angular momentum of this, uh, of this object around its center point Q, the angular momentum about point Q is going to be r crossed with p, our position crossed with our momentum vector. Or, as we already determined, that's r crossed with mv, or r crossed with v times m, whatever you prefer. Now, since we're trying to find the magnitude of this vector, the magnitude of the angular momentum about point Q is going to be, well, that's m r cross v. r cross v is just going to be r v times the sine of the angle between those. So that'll be m v r times the sine of theta. But take a look here. The angle, anywhere we look at it, is 90 degrees. There it's 90 degrees. There it's 90 degrees, doesn't matter. And the sine of 90 degrees is 1. Therefore, in this particular case, the angular momentum about point Q is just going to be mvr. A pretty simple example, but it helps to visualize, perhaps, this angular momentum vector. And we can use the right-hand rule to determine the direction of the angular momentum vector. In this case, I point my fingers of my right hand in the direction of r, bend them in the direction of v, and my thumb points into the plane of the screen. So the direction is going to be into the plane of the screen again. All right, let's take a look at the angular momentum of a point particle. Let's try and find the angular momentum for a 5 kilogram point particle located at 2, 2, with a velocity of 2 meters per second to the east. And I guess we're assuming that that's north, that's east, east, south, and west, of course. So we'll start by finding the angular momentum of this particle about point O at the origin. All right, so at point O, well, the angular momentum about point O, let's find its magnitude, is going to be mvr sine theta. Our mass is 5 kilograms. Our velocity is 2 meters per second east. Now, the r vector, well, right there, r, r, can use the Pythagorean theorem to say if that's 2 and that's 2, that must be 2 square roots of 2. So 2 square root of 2 times the sine of 45 degrees. Sine 45 degrees, square root of 2 over 2. So I put all that together, I come up with an angular momentum of 20 kilogram meters squared per second. All right, well now let's try and see if we can't find it about another point. Let's see if we can't find the angular momentum about point P over here at 2 comma 0. The magnitude of the angular momentum about point P, again, is going to be mvr sine theta. Our mass hasn't changed. Our velocity hasn't changed. Our position vector, the magnitude of our position vector from P to our object now is just 2. And we also have now the sine of the angle between these. If there's our r vector, the angle between them is 90 degrees, so the sine of 90 is 1. And once again, I come up with 5 times 2 is 10 times 2, 20 times 1, 20 kilogram meters squared per second. Great. Let's try one more then. Now let's see if we can't find the magnitude of the angular momentum about point Q. Once again, that's going to be mvr sine theta. Now our position vector from Q to our particle is right there right away you should be able to see that the angle between r and the velocity vector is going to be zero degrees. Sine of zero is zero, so the angular momentum of that particle 
about point Q must be zero. So you can see that angular momentum is dependent upon your reference point. Hopefully that gets you started with angular momentum. We'll talk more about it when we talk about the law of conservation of angular momentum here very shortly. Have a great day. Thank you so much for your time. Take care.